And you know what I love about God? He knows how to fix it. You trying to figure it out, God have already worked it out. Is that right? Even though 13 dealt you some bad deals, you were able to see the bottom line of the balancing of what God has for you. That's right. Some people bankrupt in their in their walk with God midway through the year because their life was not balancing off and things was not adding up in their account, so they gave up. But here you are still holding on, right. trusting God, even though things are not lining up and the thing that you you had wanted to see go different, but here you are today. Still trusting God Amen. for all of this. Amen. Never take your eyes off of the prize. Pastor Paul said, I'm pushing toward a higher mark of a higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. There's another level God wants you to go through and go to, but you have to realize. It takes a process. You just don't get to the next level without going through something. That's right. That's right. Amen. The thing that I accomplished as this year closed, I had to go through something to get it. Amen. I had to hold on. Sometimes I had to drag on. Sometimes I was weeping, and sometimes I didn't even think I could do it. But because I had was surrounded by people who would not let me quit. I thank God for the surrounding. The good and the bad. You just can't celebrate the good. Celebrate the bad because it balances out everything in life. Some of you got to get this spirit out of you. You can't praise God in the midst of a storm. Tell you what, it make you better. When things weren't working out, I still lifted my hand and preached and sung to the glory of God. Because I knew it was just a matter of time before it was switched. Amen. Last week we we were so blessed to find out that a church without God has no inheritance. That's right. And what I mean by that is that in our life there is a pass down mm-hmm. that comes to those who are faithfully serving God. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, Be not weary and well done. But we discovered on last week the inheritance that God is giving to the church is not for us to keep to ourselves. That's right. But we ought to release it. Many of you walked in this morning, God put a praise in your mouth, a song in your heart. All right. And you say you weren't going to tell nobody, but right. you just couldn't keep it to yourself. Amen. Amen. And as you open your mouth and begin to sing, somebody needed that word of encouragement, amen, that was stuck in your mouth. So you had to open your mouth and release it. All right. Come on now. Quit being stubborn. Amen. God gave the gifts for the edification and the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. Whatever God gives us, he gives to us to release. Thank you. Oh, y'all quiet this morning. He gives to us to release, Mother, right. so that others may be uplifted. Thank and be careful what you release. That's right. God is a God of love. God is a God of inspiration. That's it. Amen. The world will beat you down. The world will never give you nothing good. But when you come into the house of the Lord, you ought to leave here with hope. That's right. You ought to leave here with joy, unspeakable joy. That's right. You ought to leave here saying, God, I know that everything is going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Why do we come into the house of the Lord? And on the other week, I let you know that I want to clarify something because some of you took this as if the pastor does not need your substance. So I want to clear up something. Paul said, I have no greed, desire. Otherwise, I'm not greedy for your stuff. Because somebody took that and said, well, that's why I 
I'm going to keep. No. Paul said, if I preach to you spiritual things. Uh, all right. That means you shut your hand up. Say, well, that you know, Pastor. No. Yeah. What I'm saying is that most ministers out to build their life on your stuff. I got a job. Amen. Thank I've been having a job ever since I've been preaching. I thank God that I'm a working man. Amen. Now, would I like to lay home and stay in the bed and just pray for y'all? Yes. Real talk. Would I like to be like that pastor? No, today, tomorrow he's going to go fishing. Don't have to worry about nothing but teach the word of God and just love. The, would I love that in, in the first place? Yes. That's right. But right. it ain't happening right now. All right. All right. So in the meanwhile, back at the wrench, we still got to pay bills. All right. Still yes, got sir. kids to feed. Yes, sir. Things that we want to accomplish in our own life. And so Paul said, now I've lived this example for you. And so quit letting people talk about your leaders. When you know your Bible said, know them that labor among you. Uh -huh. Well, amen. amen. And then some of you don't even have the, uh, you talking and you ain't even giving nothing. That's the sad thing. You talking like you giving something. Well, well, amen anyway. We're going to close the year all right. Well, amen anyhow. You talking like you the reason why I'm riding on doves. And you ain't bought me no doves. Amen. Yep. Ducks, well, say amen. 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 Well, just get real with it. Now I can see if you bought me something, talk about it. Yes, right. Amen. Well, tell the Lord thank you. <laughs> well, let's call it for what it is. Yeah. And a lot of people know you. See, you don't know who you're talking to. Yeah. Uh -huh. So while you're texting and out there saying all this stuff, you might be texting somebody that know me. They don't even text your church, but just know me. Right. See, I can't believe you go sit up on that person and talk about them like that. And I'll tell y'all something real serious. You know, we all have things that we like, Brother Franklin. Yeah. And I always liked the nice things. I just get that straight before I got saved. I, when I was an unsaved man, I drove nice things. Well, wait a minute. You don't believe me go back home and ask folks to go in the neighbor. I always kept, I met my wife, I was driving a clean car. I wasn't dirty. I was riding on doves and some bold ties. But amen. brothers, amen. amen, spinners, sunroof. Crushed velvet seat. Is that right, woman of God? Amen. When she met me, I wasn't in the Volkswagen ride with no way. I had it going on. Because I was in the Navy working a job, riding the seven seas, getting seasick, All right. and felt like if I go ride, well, amen. So sometimes you got to know who you're attached to. And then some of you got a covenant spirit, and you don't know what that person had to go through to get what they got. And so while you up there rolling your eyes and looking, I don't know what you had to go through to get where you at. Amen. So before I cover you and start a undercutting you and looking at your stuff, come on, saints, get that spirit out of your life. Don't be a covenant when God has promised you a covenant. Boy, that's a preach. We sure will. We sure will preach. You don't have to be a covenant when God has promised you a covenant. He said, if you buy me, I promise to bless you. Saints, we don't have to be jealous of each other. Amen. God tell y'all. Buy the first lady something. Y'all look inside her head. Well, her boots look like it. Well, buy some more. And watch God bless you. Come on, watch God bless you. Amen. Then when you want to change that seat, you become a first lady. You treat people the way you want to be treated. You don't know what the first lady has to go through after church is over with. You don't know how your pastor at home crying and throwing a fit. And she still got to put up. Come on, say Amen. Well, amen. You just don't know what Michelle Obama have to go through. You looking at her on TV, talking about, I wish I was her. You don't know what Obama do when he closed that door. You don't know. Some of you ain't even first ladies, just members of the church, and you going through hell. Amen. You ain't even the first. You 13 is still having trouble. Well, anyway. I love Paul because Paul says, I work with my own hands. And say, let me tell you something. There's going to come a day where God's going to bless you. And many of you may even, God may even bless you to be in a ministry where the ministry is capable of taking care of you. You can write books and be blessed. But meanwhile, until that day comes, be faithful. Quit leave dreaming. Wake up. Amen. Quit watching all these movies. Somebody, you want to be like somebody. You don't know what the people went through. Yeah. That's right. You don't know what these people had to go through to pastor them big old churches, man. I know if I had to 
Lord Jesus, I know if I'm struggling with this. I can only imagine what the biggest pastors have to go through. And some of you jealous with new people go, I can't even get five minutes with them. Oh, oh, oh. you're jealous. Yeah. Now what you would do with 500? My God. You can't even talk to your pastor for four weeks straight. All right. You'll stop coming? I didn't spoil y'all. Look at y'all looking at me all cross out I didn't spoil y'all to mess y'all all up. Church can't grow because of little siblings sitting there. Get out the way and somebody else coming in. Be blessed. That's right. That's right. And grown. Is that right, Mama? Grow up. Amen. Right. Right, I don't expect Sean to be all up on his mama. It's J turn. He had his time. Well, hey, amen. I won't break amen. that because in 2014, some of y'all who've been here a while, I'm going to start telling you to set yourself down somewhere now. But you ain't draining the life out of me. I need you to put some life into me. Thank because you. some of you been here long enough and I didn't put enough word in you. Amen. You ought to be telling me, Pastor, All I got right. this. All right. Pastor, yeah. I got this. There won't be no division. I got this, Pastor. I, I got this. You just going off and go ahead, Pastor. I got it. I'm going to do just like the word say. Not in your own spirit. Because the Bible said people should be like the priest. Amen. Now, I want to I wanna close the New Year's out. God is so good. Because there was a statement that was made to me on the other week. And I know it was God. Because people can sense what goes on in your house the minute they walk in. Because there's an atmosphere. If I turn the heat on, what should it be like when you're walking in? If I turn the air conditioning on, you're going to be cold. Amen. I'll tell you nothing on me, you're going to be who are you really are, lukewarm. <laughs> you ought to catch that revelation. See, I can adjust the thermostat to make you feel comfortable. All right. I can put All it on right. hot or cold, but when I turn it on, it's going to really tell who you are. Amen. You're going to be high, you're going to be fanning, you're going to be lukewarm, one minute you're high. And some of you call it high flash. No, that's really what's wrong with you. That's right. If you turn the, uh, the thermostat off, it's going to really show you who you really are. Amen. And some of you are going to be fanning, and some of you going to be like, I'm hot. Some of you are going to be like, I'm cold. That's really what's going on within you. The church sets a thermostat. When people walk in, they can be going through things in life. But if the Holy Ghost is here, uh-huh. and the presence of the Lord is in the building, it's going to set them whatever the atmosphere in the building. They might come in cold, but all of a sudden the Lord begin to breathe up on them. They'll get warm. That's right. Come on, Amen. That's why you want the spirit of the Lord in the building, not our spirit. That's right. Not Pentecost, not Baptist. Yes. We want the Holy Ghost to come. Yes. Amen. Because when the spirit of the Lord is at liberty, he comes and he pays visitation to us. Yes. Yes. God knows what you need this morning. Many of you walked in here. With things on your heart. But I'm going to help you close out 2013 real good. All if right. you would do what I tell you to do today. All right. You will leave here with a whole new mindset. Because God is great. Why would he let us close out the last book of the chapter. With a word that is needed in our, in our world today. Wow. Okay. And that word is bonding. All right. Amen. What happened to the bond? Homes are breaking up because people are not bonding no more. Too many people are breaking and not bonding. But let me tell you what makes a good bond. Metal. Heat. Pressure. Y'all ain't catching this. If you ever want to get close to somebody, pressure causes you to bond. Have you ever had somebody go through something and you just really didn't realize how much they meant to you until stuff started happening to them and then all of a sudden you really want to bond to them because you realize that y'all was meant to be together. That's right. Pressure shouldn't break you. Pressure should bond you. Amen. Now let's look at the scripture because see some of y'all don't believe me. After Paul began to tell him in the 20th chapter of Acts at the 35th verse he began to tell them how I demonstrated before you examples of all these things so that you all will work hard to help those who are weak. Yeah. Now, there are going to be some time that you will have to reach down because you are stronger than the person that is in relationship with you. That's right. You're going to have to reach down sometime and just pick them up. Amen. 
You're going to have to. Because that person may be going through some things in their life that you may not understand, but because that person is a part of your life. I'm talking to Christians now. I'm not talking to the world. That person, you should be able to reach down, whether that person, you like them or not, you don't have to like them. You are obligated to that person as a part of the ministry. You can't turn off God off and on. That's right. You can't just love God one day and all next day, I ain't going to do what God. That, God ain't that way. God is eternal. That's right. So Paul began to say, Paul said, you know what? He said, I have a concern because if the wolf come in and y'all not bonded together, you know what the devil come in at? In division. Amen. You know what relationship break down at? When that bond breaks. That's right. You know what fellowship breaks down at? When you break that bond. All right. Amen. When you don't when you don't pray together. All when right. you don't when you don't cry together. When you don't when you don't release to each other. I'm going through. You know what, baby? That's okay. I'm going through too. Yeah. But I got a feeling everything gonna be all right. Amen. Let me pray for you while you going through. Not judge you. Because when I go through, I don't want you to judge me. I want you to pray for me. Amen. Look what Paul says. He says, now, remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, who himself say, it is, greater, it is a greater blessing to give than to receive. Ninety-nine percent of true Christianity, you're going to be given. Amen. amen. I won't get a lot of amen. All right, all right. We want God's anointing, but we don't want God's love. Amen. Lord. One of the greatest gifts of all is you constantly giving out of the bus. Now, you're not giving out of you. If you got the love of God in you, God is love. Yes, yes. He is. Yes, He is. Sometimes that giving could be a rebuke you may not like. That's right. But long as I do it in Love. It is acceptable. Amen. I don't like whooping my children, but another time I whoop them in love. That's right. But the whooping is what makes them think it ain't good. All right. Amen. Nobody like a whooping. But if I don't love you, I would chastise you. That's what the Lord said. Paul has a concern. Paul knows once I speak about love and about giving, it irritates people because no one wants to feel like they the one always putting out and not nobody else giving in. <laughs> On the other week when I was talking about the putting out, it's very important that every now and then people put into you. Amen. It's a balance and it's an equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is that important, Pastor? Because if you're giving all the time, your human mind is saying, wait a minute, when am I going to receive? If it's nothing but to say, thank you. Say to God, your giving don't have to always equal your receiving. Well, somebody don't like this. You can't pay two for tax. Because I give you a pair of shoes don't mean you have to give me a pair of socks. God don't work that way. God said you gave them shoes, but right now they need a hat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, God, I want to equal. No, your equation don't ain't. You don't think my thoughts not your thoughts. I don't think the way you think. All right, all right. You trying to do it your way. I don't need you. I need you to come into my way. I said, God, what 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 causes us? To miss the equation. He said we miss truth. We don't know how to accept truth. Paul says in the 36th verse. After speaking these things. Paul kneeled down. And prayed. With all the elders. Amen. Now 2013. Is shedding out. You know that scripture in Proverbs says a three-four chord is not easy to broken. Amen. Can y'all find that funny? Why would Paul pray for all the elders? In leadership, we are leaders in the church. Yes. And if the leader is weak, My Lord. if the leader is unbalanced, 
it's going to call the unanswered un back all the way down the, the, the rank. My Lord. If the husband and the wife is not getting along, the kids are going to act like a bunch of heathens. My Lord. Sometimes people don't like to address leadership. But I'm one of them. I've never, as long as I've been pastor, was afraid to tell people I'm going through something. Yeah. I wouldn't suspect you to sit there and try to calculate it up and ask a hundred questions. I suspect you do the same thing I do for you when you tell me. Yeah. Get down on my knees. Because too much information makes you look at the person kind of funny. That's right. Now, every now and then I like to spill. Let you know I got troubles too. Yeah. Her lady get on me sometimes, baby. Baby, we let them know we got some stuff too we go through. Yeah, yeah. We ain't perfect. That's right. Baby, they ain't embarrassed. Well, they need to, we need to be embarrassed. Let them know when I embarrass them that I ain't the only one. I ain't scared to tell you that my toe hurt. I ain't scared to tell you that, that I've been down, me and my wife have been down in the courthouse. I ain't scared to tell you that because I know you on your way down there. When you go down there, I'm going to tell you, you might not want to go down there. How you know, Pastor? I've been down there. Too many leaders are hiding their, their mess and it comes out unexpected. Yes. I don't believe one brother told me one year, man, I, that between me and my wife. I said, that's why y'all ain't growing. That's why people don't feel nothing around you. You're phony, man. Let people know every now and then you're too hurt, too. Yeah. Let people know every now and then you get mad, too. You get discouraged, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you supposed to be annoying. I ain't gone. And some of you sitting here act like you so saved. And what's going to happen when your, when your dirty laundry come out, it's going to really be dirty. And folks going to look at you, what, what happened to all that detergent you had, that anointing? That's why I confess as I go along. Amen. Somebody say with me, confession is good for the soul. That don't mean that, you know, you, know, then you better be careful who you open up to, too. If you believe, don't believe among sharks because they eat you up. Saints will love you. Sharks will eat you up. Who can you confine in? When you're, when you're at the verge of giving up, when you're at the verge and the devil's beating you down, and you're like, man, I, need, I can't talk to anybody, but I need to talk to somebody. Yeah, yeah. That will not judge me, will not beat me down, but love me, but, but, but ain't afraid to tell me, you know what? You, you see what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> but I'm going to help you comb your hair. Your hair is messed up, but sit down, I'm going to fix it for you. That's right. Mine's been messed up before. Quit acting like your house ain't never been dirty. Quit acting like your kids ain't never been dirty. Quit acting like nobody ever tried to come pull you out of your marriage. Well, say amen. That's right. Brothers, yeah, amen. when I get up here and talk, this is real talk. I'm not talking to damn y'all. I'm telling you what it's like to be in the Christian world. You got to line yourself up because pressure's on every side. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Why would you call the elder? The other day I had my three boys at the table and I had to set the house in order. I had to do that. I finally got all three of them together. Amen. And I had to set the house in order. I said, Ron, when I tell you what to do, you do it. Because you're the oldest. Yeah. And I said, Sean, that's your brother. When he asks you to do something, as long as it ain't out of the will of God, you do it. That's an order, even in marriage, in yes, relationship. Yes, amen. Quit letting these young kids tell these old kids what to do. You didn't come out first. Amen. First kids got so much pressure on them. Yes. Because everybody bleeds off of you. And when you don't respect leadership. You will never grow. Amen. Y'all talk back to me. Amen. Quit letting folks tell you about your, well, girl, that's why you ain't got nobody to lead you in the house. L let that man lead. Amen. Girl, you let him talk. Sit down somewhere. At least you got somebody to talk to. Amen. Have you been at home and talking to the wall? Keep on. You're going to be talking to that wall by yourself. You're going to be back in the mirror talking to yourself again. Uh -oh. Cuckoo for the logo. Logo. Yeah, logo. You're going to be in there talking to yourself. And then, and, 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 and too many men don't like women talking to themselves. Men don't like, women don't like men in there talking to themselves. I'm glad that God blessed me with a wife that I can talk to. Somebody I can, not the dog, somebody can communicate back with me. 
You got to have love in your relationship. Yes, now I'm talking about bond. The reason why I'm talking about the word bond, because Paul said, after speaking these things, he kneeled down and he prayed with all the elders. Uh -huh. I said, God, why did he pray with the elders? Mm -hmm. These are the pillars of the church. Yeah. And I look at all my elders in this church. I got on tip of the other week in a meeting. Somebody said, well, I told her because she's been here the longest. I don't expect her to be acting like a little kid. She's been in this ministry all this year. Mm. I'm tired of that stuff. You crying. You ain't new. Mm. And I can review because I love her. I know she's been up under my ministry. You on meat now. What you acting like you on milk for? All right. Bring it. And she, I looked at her. I said, I suspect you to be more mature than this thing. Bring it. Somebody took it. No. Yeah, no, no. They ain't favor. That is just reality. I suspect if I leave this church, if y'all been up under me, you elders been up under me, I don't expect you let a bunch of foolishness go on in this church. And I come back and the people looking all funny. I want some answers. Amen. You say you love me, you love the people. Amen. You can't say you love me and don't love the people. That's right. Bishop, I got your back. You better leave God's children alone. Amen. Amen. You should have told the Lord I do. Y'all know what I'm talking about, I do. Make an oath. Hold your head up. I swear, I'm going to serve the Lord. And then as soon as the truth start acting up, you want to ban the ship. Huh. Uh, yeah, yeah. You think I don't want to leave? They still my children. God said, go back over there and get them. Right. Lord, they don't want to listen. He said, I know. That's why I sent you over there. Right. Uh, how long? Blessings come with obedience. Paul kneels down and he prayed with all the elders this morning. <coughs> the other week we were talking and I said, it was the people is not your responsibility. The people belong to God. Your responsibility as a leader is just to teach the people. I mean, you're in leadership. In the, uh, you, I think it's a good to see Chief, Chief leadership, my good friend Chief. She know about leadership. She got to teach people for the next rank. It's up to them to receive the teaching. All right. Amen. Leaders, let me tell you something. Quit taking it personally when people reject you. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I grew up. I didn't learn. I'm going to tell you something. That's why I'm moving on. Because I say, God, the rejection ain't my problem. As long as I release it, if they reject it, that's their problem. Most leaders not need to know how to deal with rejection. Father, you're going to be rejected. Mothers, you're going to be rejected when you're walking in the righteousness of God. There's going to be times that you're going to be rejected. Amen. It's not because of God. It's just the enemy picking on you. Amen. Pastor, how do I handle rejection? Key word, prayer. Prayer helps you through the process of rejection. Because prayer puts you back in community with God, the one who gave you the mission. All right. All right. When you go before God and begin to pray to God and put the people back in the hands of God, then God begins to remind you, okay, get back to the focus of the mission. That's it. Amen. I commend the elders. When I talk about elders, I'm talking about people. The elders could be somebody, to me, an elder is somebody not only been in the church, know the scripture. Elder is somebody who's walking and know how to operate in it. An elder is somebody who's matured and older. I'm the older. Somebody know how to handle situations and know not let it get out of hand with being mature. The Bible says he calls the weak younger because they're strong. I always had what you call old men sense. Old soul. Yeah. I look at things. I, I observe things before I go in there and try to fix it. Sometimes the door just straight off the hinge, and you ain't got the the, the tools to fix it. Just be like, well, oh, just leave it out there. Somebody gonna come fix it. Right now, we just need to leave the door off the hinge. You in there trying to put the wrong screws in there, and the door ain't even really working now. All right. <laughs> Sometimes the Holy Ghost tells you no. You don't have the skills to fix that. Amen. 
I said on last week, in an inheritance, there's a requirement, there's a skill that God gives us. That's why he said, I give some to teach, some to preach. That's a skill that comes with your anointing. Amen. You can't be something that you're not. Amen. And when you walk outside, work outside that boundary, you cause confusion. Yes, Amen. Yes, Why would you leave a horse to somebody who don't know how to ride it? They break their neck. Yes, what y'all say, man? Y'all yeah, looking funny. Like I'm, yeah. Lord bless me. I ain't gonna bless you with that anointing. You are not using a small one. I got. Oh, expand my territory. Lord, I will. Oh, boy, you guys don't even get in front of altar this morning. Get down on your knees and say, God, put me back where I'm where I'm supposed to be, where I'm affected at, where I can see that I'm benefiting folks' right. lives. God, where I see that I'm benefiting my life. God, I, I, everybody that prayed over me, proper lied over my life, right. told me right. I'm going to be something great. Right. I just need to get, get back to realize, some of you don't even know who you are. You got so much makeup on. Right. Jesus, Jesus. You don't know who you, got what you look like. That would have made you fix yourself up and cover yourself with so much stuff lied to you. Well, if you put this on, you'll feel better. Yeah. Take it off! Yeah, man. My God. My God. <laughs> I want to be me. I'm not trying to be nobody else. Yeah. People, people who bonds with you know what it took for you to get where you at. See, if you've been through the fire with me, you know why I'm the way I am. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You were there when I broke down. Yeah. Then you were there when I got up. Yes. Yeah. You were there when I was in the fire, yeah. and hollering and screaming. Right. You, you yeah. told me to hold on, and now you see me come out as pure gold. And somebody wonder why I'm pure gold. You said, "Man, I've seen them go through something." Yeah. All right. I've seen every one of y'all in this church may grow up in your life. I've seen you through your ups and downs. I've seen you through your trials and tribulations. Yeah. Somebody said, well, you're going to have a church. I said, why are we going to just sit? Sometimes we just need to watch a film of what happened in 2013 and really think about it. You ever looked at pictures? Pictures can't lie. That's right. Pictures will tell you what you did that year. All right. Whether you ate too much, whether you ain't ate enough. Yeah, yeah. Whether you were just laying around being lazy, whether you just gave up on yourself. Pictures can't lie. That's right. That's right. Go back and look at the pictures of yourself. The early part of the year, the joy you had in your face. And you then look at the one now. And you say, Lord, what didn't happen to my joy? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. done got around somebody who didn't change your photograph. You don't change my photo. I know who I am. Yeah. I want to encourage you. The devil will come and steal what God promised you. Yeah. That's right. God told me this year, he said, before you close out the year, he said, pray with all your elders. Pray with them. I said, why do you want me to pray with them, Lord? He said, remind them. Of the coming. Don't come promise me a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Trying to please me. I need you to do what God told you to do. Every one of you ministers in this church. If the Lord told you to teach, preach, pray, pray. Pray till Jesus come back. Don't do it with the wrong motive. Don't do it for the wrong reason. Do it because the Lord told you to do it. Amen. And when you do it because the Lord told you to do it. You will see progress even if it ain't in your face. Because the Bible says, don't be like the heathens. Pray open and they want everybody to him. I pray in secretly. And when you pray in secretly, God will reward you openly. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Too many people running their mouth in the church of the Lord. Saying prayers and shut your mouth and pray in secret. And watch what God do for you. Solid prayer is more powerful than a loud prayer. Get your women to God in your home. Don't, oh, I'm buying the devil. No, just mm, yeah. Yeah. shut your mouth. Yeah. And go into a solid two yeah. place with God. Yeah. Go back down into the lion's den. Go back down there and get in the lion's den. Go back down there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and get in the fire with God. And watch at the seven hour how God will turn the fire down in your situation. Watch God do it. Get with somebody who knows what it's like. Not to panic when you start smelling metal. Well, things are burning, people get nervous. Things, you know, things got to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. Got to get hot before it gets better. Lord. And when things are going all crazy in your life, you get with some prayer warriors. Amen. And some of you need a good cry before the year is over. Uh, you got all this stuff bundled up in you. Like you Superman or somebody. You got to release. You got to release. Don't carry it in 2014. Release 
release it. Paul is is moving on, mother. And, and something I, I, I started this year when I was going to graduate. I said, I ain't invite nobody to graduate. He ain't happy for me. And I know when you ain't happy for me. Because you always want to question what I'm doing. Should the Lord told you? Did the Lord tell you? To go buy them collard greens? No. Huh. So why you question me? I want somebody to get with me. Say, brother, I'm going to really be praying that you stand in the will of God because I know the, desire, the enemy desires to sweep you like wheat. But you know what? I'm praying for you. And as you go on, I'm praying that God will guide you. God, start telling people about my promotion. I want to move on. Some of you start praying in the spirit. Oh, this ain't God. Listen. What is God? For me to suffer, to stay here, and not have joy in my life, to work on my life and not get some things, not enjoy the good of the land, not enjoy the harvest. I've been been digging. When I'm going to see the harvest? My God, all right. Get with some people that want to see you blessed. Girl, you going to try marriage again? Yeah! This time I'm trying it with Jesus. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get before the Lord. I'm not, I ain't going to let that hurt stop me from being happy. And if you ain't married, you're peeping. Oh my Illegal. Yeah. Oh Lord. Oh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God don't want you peeping. Oh my God. <laughs> Good cry. God, I got hurt in 2013. Trusted some people. They broke me down, but they ain't going to stop me from living. Oh, yeah. He kneeled down and prayed with all the elders. Why did he pray with them? A family that prays together stay with them. I want every elder to stand up in this church. I want you to stand up. I want to charge you. Oh, you stand up to you the elder. You just stood up now. Lord, no, the Lord told you to stand up. You're a prayer boy. You don't know I know that, but you're going to stand. You stay standing. See, you're a prayer. An elder is somebody, basically, that God is in charge of you to be the more mature person in the situation. And ministers know what I'm talking about. That responsibility, level of responsibility, is that no matter what happened, the church must go on. Amen. Paul is trying to stationary the elders and say, listen, I'm leaving. That's right. But the church must go on. Parents, when you leave the house, you tell the oldest one, I'm leaving. But make sure everything what? It's staying on. Yeah. In order for things to stay in order, you got to understand order. Amen. Paul kneeled down and he prayed with him. What did he pray with him for? And I'm going to tell y'all, I know some of you elders is frustrated because the Bible says the people should be like the priest. You get frustrated when you want things to be better and it don't go back. You're only human. Amen. Come on, minister. I'm the only one going to confess. You want to see the growth of the people you're preaching, you don't see no growth, it frustrates you. A teacher trying to teach a class and the students don't pass the test, frustrating. That's Something ain't right. Either information not getting out or these kids are just a bunch of dummies. Which one? <laughs> Y'all elders going to be honest with me? Yes, man. <laughs> you down there teaching and praying, putting, pushing plates away, and you don't see no growth in people, you become frustrated. And you begin to question your leadership. You got others to look at me. From God, after this one, y'all will be back in the hands of God. Because every one of y'all have a calling in your life that's greater than where you are right now. I'm going to say that again. Every one of you got a calling in your life that's greater than where you are right now. Amen. When I was coming up, ministers didn't tell me this. They just made me just... Just concentrate on where I was. Like, they, they didn't make me look beyond where I was. And what I want you to do this morning, where you are right now, don't mean that where you're going to be. But if I can get you to praise God for where you at, and thank God for what he's done for you already, and thank God for he entrusted you and the keys that you have right now. God, I want to be faithful with this thing. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes. God, I'm not going to despise the small days. That's right. I'm going to be a good servant where I'm at right now. I'm going to serve with, with honesty. I'm going to serve with everything that I got, God. Because when my day comes to be served, I want to be served just the way I'm serving. Amen. 
You can't go in another person's house and undermine that leader. You're not being fair. And uh, the Bible said that the, in the book of Amos that God will always reveal things to the prophet. See, that's, that's, there may be many gifts in this room, many prophets and teachers, but that's one head prophet in this house. And his name is Otis L. Terrell. And believe me, I am the prophet of this house. Amen. That's not bragging. I know how to prophesy in this house. And I know my people. And I know my leaders. And that's why I met you last year when I say I felt a snake in the house, they crawled out the door. Because I'm about to reveal it. Don't you play with me up under my leadership. Somebody say, they say, don't you think you can come in here because I know a wolf. And I can smell a rat. So don't play with me. Don't think you can prophesy, buy me gifts that don't even work with me. Because I have accountability to God over these people. And you're not going to come in here and put your dirty hands on God's people and try to undermine me. I don't got time for fake prophecy. And I know a false prophet when I see one. Because they're full of mess. I say a wolf is dangerous, spiteful, and always... Ups- Come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. All right. How can you have the love of God in your heart? God is love. Yes, Under right. all conditions, God right. is love. He said, Peter, you love me? Yes. Feed my sheep. Yes. I didn't say judge them. I said what? Feed them. Your responsibility is to feed the people of God. Yes. I want to tell these elders that. Your responsibility is not to judge them, not to be up there trying to put your personal opinion on them, Tell them the truth and leave them in the hands of God. Yes. And you'll see growth in your own life. Amen. You get Amen. messed up messing with wild sheep. Yes. Yes. That's why the Bible said let the wheat and the tarot grow together. Yes. He said when I come I'll do the separation. Yes. Hey, you over there trying to pass pull. You'll mess up pulling some good people trying to pull the bad people out. Yes, he said I'll do the separation. Yes, We're going to have some wheat and tarot in here. Yes, some wolves and sheep. Yes, right. They're going to come. But God said, I'll do the separation. Yes, yes. A good shepherd. And the sheep knows the shepherd boy. And a harlot they would not hear. That's why some of you, you get mad at the shepherd, you'll start listening to anything. He said, I'll give you pastors according to my own heart that right. will teach you and nurture you in the things of God. That God know what you need. Right. Either you're going to be in this ministry, under this ministry, and trust the membership of this ministry, the mission of this ministry, or you go to the other church. You can't be in two different right. Your mind can't be in two churches. Anything serve two, now anything got two heads is freaky. It's a freak. Well, I'm just telling you the truth. Anything with two heads is freaky. All right. Get back in, under the leadership. Get back under. And if you ain't happy, be man or woman up say, God, I'm done here. Because what that was that schism that caused a vision in the yes, body. It does. Yes. I know I wasn't going to get a lot of hit man on this. So he prayed for him. I want to ask God this morning to release every hurt in y'all. Because in, in the next year when you come in here, I need a new, I need a new face. Amen. I need a new commitment. I need people going to walk in here and say, Pastor, let's do what God tells us to do. And let's get out of here. And when time to get out of church, we gone. We out of here. I'm back. I ain't standing around talking. I ain't got time to be listening, talking to people. This is causing a bunch of confusion. When every time you got to stand around two or three hours and deal with a bunch of people that should know better. Amen. You ought to put that note on my door no more. Amen. You better not come in and talk to me before Amen. service starts. Take that note off my door. You ought to be big enough to know not to go touch the man of God. For Obama preaching, you run in there. Guess what, Mr. President? Shut up! You already know the release anyway. Pray! Hell, you all confused. Because they come in there and lay a bunch of stuff on you. That's a demon. Amen. Well, I know you're going to get mad. You Don't play with me. Don't play with me in 2014. Because you know what? God is about to close some chapters. Woo! The position have been uh, been been, uh, been uncovered. People know that this is an anointing. This is a calling to be a leader of the church. It is a calling. Yes. God is speaking to me. To speak it to your life. Yes, Amen. Quit camping with the position. Yes, so he kneeled down and he prayed. With all the else. All your hands up. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. You know what these ministers been through, some of the things that they have been doing. They're human too. 
How that 2013 come to a close? Some of them had great intentions, God. Some of them, God, even went in prayer. Some of them even made ultimate sacrifice. Yes, Lord. Because they wanted to see things better. Some of them, God, quit before you told them to quit because they were frustrated. God, we only knew it, but you showed me some of them became, God, just discouraged because of yes. what they seen. But, Father, I ask you today to remind them that a person that put their hands to the plow yes, and take it away is not even fit for the kingdom of God. We can't say the Lord tell me to do something, then we take our hands out. Yes. Number two about it calls friction yes, in the Bible. God, if you've been telling them to do it, don't let them do it. If you told them to do it, let them do it. Yes, in yes. season, out of season, in the storm, yes. in the rain. Yes, Lord. Father God, because now there's a commitment, there's a bond that comes with leadership. And it is God, a charge I have to keep in the God to glorify. Every leader said with me, a charge I have to keep. Yes. Charge I have to keep. And a God to glorify. Now I want to tell you leader something. If you don't like her and she don't like you, please don't expect them to like each other. You don't like her and she don't like you. You don't like her, she don't like you. How y'all gonna serve up under me? That's right. That's it. That's it. You don't like him. He don't like you. Y'all elders in the church. If they ought to be seeing y'all bonding and talking and laughing and fellowshipping. That's right. That's right. Um, oh, but God said to me, no, no, God didn't say you're here to protect me. I need y'all either bond, get together, or leave it alone. Now, see, somebody might say this. Now, I feel this in my spirit. You will never find in the Bible, God said I'm all in two. Why did he send them in two? Ain't gonna come a time when Sister Stewart gonna be tired. Whoa, now you got to carry her. She gonna have to carry you. That's right. When you become physically weak, when I'm come physically weak, y'all gotta lift me up. That's right. Pastor, we got to hold your hand. That's right. That's right. What kind of people you around? It's just real close around. I wanna go 2014 around people that ain't for me. That ain't gonna see me healthy, don't wanna see me have a good life, don't wanna see me be successful, don't wanna see me prosper. Delete them out of your phone. And you, and you go to pray for them, and the Lord won't even hear. You know why? He said, because I didn't cut them off. Amen. They didn't turn over to a reprobated mind. All right. People don't believe it, that's just about a reprobated mind. I, I make them think what they're doing is right. Because they believe it right so much, I just let them think it's doing what it is right. Oh my Lord. God, why come when I pray for what's God? I just don't feel good when I get up. And God say, because that, that you're praying for a, a curse. And he said, whoever curse you, I'll curse them. And whoever bless you, I'll bless them. All right. You can't curse somebody and expect a blessing on top of that. Amen. I know this is going to be kind of quiet. All right. <laughs> I mean, you can honestly say, those of you standing up, that you understand the mission of this vision. Do you understand me? If you don't understand me, you come into my office and you talk to me, but don't you dare leave out of here another Sunday saying in your mind that you don't understand me when I write my vision very clear. He said, go ye therefore in the highways and the byways and come up here to come to God. I'm not trying to raise a wealthy church. I'm trying to raise a healthy church. All right. All right. A church that understands their purpose in God, that when you get in your home and, you're in your home and you open that Bible, you women know your position, you men know your position, you don't have to sit up here. If this church closed tomorrow, you can open your Bible and say, that man was a man of God, teach the word of God. A wealthy church that well on a bunch of, a bunch of confusion, a bunch of stuff going on. I don't care about no mass choir. What good is a mass choir when there's a bunch of mess up there? What good is it? I'd rather have two singing under the word of God and loving each other than have a whole choir of people sitting there. Oh, I love you. Can't stand you. Uh, yeah. 
my guy. Paul, after he prayed for him, the Bible said he had a good cry. Yes. No more excuses saying, I don't understand my brother. Just the brother Thomas come on the other day and said, Pastor, and I knew it was God. He said, I, I want to get closer to my sisters in the church. Because he know I didn't raise him that way. When we was in 2012, Agnes, all of us was told close. Yeah. Wasn't the ministers yeah. was real close. That's right. We had a bond. That's right. We close right, right now. I called Tim in the Stratton right now. They'll be here so quick. We had a bond. There wasn't no food. Shit. And the kids seen that. People know where y'all ain't close each other. That's right. That's right. Now you gotta ask yourself why you're mad. Cool. If somebody did something to stand in your brother and your brother just got all you go to him. Go to him. Is that scripture, Mom? The Bible says you got all your brother. Go to him. Amen. You went to your friend in the world. I heard you were talking about me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Walk up on that thing. What's the problem? That's right. Did we do that? Oh, I'm the only one that came out of the world. Walk up on you in a minute. Yeah, you rolled your eyes at me, Father. What was that all about? Walk up on your saints. What's wrong with you? Hugging all funny. Don't pat on me. I ain't a pat That's right. I can't even get a good hug out of you. That's right. There's a wall there. What is that wall? That's right. Come on now. I look for that people in the world. That's right. But when I see Brother West, I always expect him to be, hey, man, going to hug me. What you doing? Give me a hug. I really love you. I ain't funny. Give me a hug. Greet the me. Greet me. People in the world, brothers walk up on each other. What's up, fool? Yeah. Hold them all about it. Hey, what's up, boy? I love you, boy. Uh, do anything for you. I don't see nothing in y'all brothers in church. Okay. Okay. Pat, I ain't gonna pat you, bro. Don't pat on me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> if you love me, bro, you gonna walk up and hug me like, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? <laughs> That's real talk, mother. I'm talking about brother. I'm not talking about a bunch of brothers and sisters hugging on each other. Get that mixed up. <laughs> gripping on one another. Don't run like that that's gripping. <laughs> you know a holy kiss, a holy oh, hug. Boy. I'm a worldly hug. <laughs> hug me, move on. Don't be sitting there looking me all in my eye. <laughs> Is that right? All that rubbing and stroking ain't necessary. Uh, you need a hug and act off for once. <laughs> Wife, I think some of the tensions in here, some of y'all just at the point where y'all ready to get, get somebody in your life and you tensify your tense. <laughs> and God said, I'm about to bless those who've been faithful. Amen. He told me, he said, I'm about to bless you with your companion. Amen. Amen. And you get tense when you when you get ready to get something from God. It gets you all just touchy. Oh, y'all love the Lord? Amen. Y'all going to circle that hug each other for a few minutes. Give me a song, Sean. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Move quickly. Uh, get it out of you. Uh, if I said anything to you, I'm sorry. If I talked about you, I'm sorry. Don't be fake with people. Don't be fake with them. Jesus, Sean. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Man, you my brother, you my sister, man. If I get sick, if I'm on the side of the road, if I'm laying down there on the side of the road and I ain't got nobody, who gonna come pick me up? Might be stuck, mama. A good, a good Samaritan. Somebody come. Sometime old people pass you by. But God got a good Samaritan going to come pick you up. Amen. And don't get mad when a good Samaritan come. That's right. And do more than what the Christian's supposed to do. Amen. 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 No, y'all ain't just me. I want y'all to get up and go do it again. Somebody mad. Y'all ain't faking me. Give me another song. Y'all ain't playing with me today. Y'all ain't playing with me today. Y'all ain't playing with me today. Mother, because the Bible said that they cried a little bit. They embraced and they cried. Talk them like it's your last time. What if you get home and that person dies? It may be your last time. That's right. Embrace them like it's your last time.
Rise up like it's your last time. Because you might be standing before God before the year is over. Should take a funeral, Brother Gray, for us to realize what we need to each other. My sister died and I didn't even tell her how much I love her. My, my, the minister preached on my soul and labor on me. I had opposition because the message I didn't like, but the message was for me. Brother Peter preached to miss a God like a good cry. How can you say you love who you have not seen to hate your brothers and sisters who you see every day? God, I love you. Thomas, you don't love me. He said, Thomas, how can you say you love me who you have not seen and hate your brothers you see every day? Y'all don't know how serious this is. See, right. see, see. See, when a person is laying down cold, took the sewer in it. Want to put flowers on? Right. When the person was guarding you on the war field and all of a sudden they down. And you didn't realize how much they mean to you. Now you got to carry the stuff by yourself. The Bible said they didn't break it. They had a good cry. They had a good cry. Why were they crying, God? They had some things on their heart. A heavy heart, the Bible said. Will make you act funny. When your heart is heavy, when you've been hurt, and people don't understand it, and seem like people don't understand you. See, 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 this is God. This is God. All right. When your heart is heavy, you've been through some things, and you just, you say, man, right now, I just want to, I want to cry because. You don't understand what I've been through this year. You don't, you don't understand that. I felt like giving up. I feel like one night the devil told me, won't you end it? Won't you end it? You ain't got nothing to live for. Won't you take your life? You ain't going to mount to nothing. You ain't, gonna, you ain't a good mother. You ain't a good father. You ain't a good husband. You ain't a good wife. Why don't you end You ain't a good child. Won't you end this thing? All right. But the Lord will come and embrace you. He will come and put his arms around you and tell you, No, I will never leave you, nor would I forsake you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The world will leave you by the wayside. But don't get mad at the world. Never know, never know what, never know what it's like to have a father. God commends us being strong, but sometimes we got to say, you know what? I need nursing. But all my life I had to be my own. God, I can't trust nobody. He said, no, that's not true. <laughs> I'll put a father in your life. I'll put one in your life that will nurse you through the stage of your life. Some of you are unbalanced because you don't even know how to handle a man. Because you never had a man in you. Your dad had never been there to embrace you. But this year, if you allow me to, I'll help you transition. I've had to be my own man and woman. I had to fight all my life to protect myself. I don't know how to let go.
but I can't transition to the next part of my life until I let go. Right. I've compassed this mountain too many times. I know what the mountain looked like. And I'm ready for this mountain to be removed. God, I've been hurt in ministry. You can trust. Terrell, this ain't wood, bro. Let me talk about me. This ain't wood. You're on new territory. You're on new grounds. All right. yeah. Let bygones be bygones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leave whatever you have at the water. Close out the years saying, God, I won't take it over to the other side. All right, that's it. The Bible said they embraced each other. Yeah. And they cried. Oh, yeah. Crying is don't make you weak. It shows what's really going on on the inside. God loves a good cry. Sometimes you got to embrace and let the tears roll down. It's been a rough. You don't know much talk of this year. You don't know what I went through. You don't know how many nights I stayed up doubting myself. But somewhere or another, I made it. Brother Rando and I was talking the other day and I said, No. It's cool. What need? The days I wanted to quit. I look over at the one that made it and say, she won't let me quit. I thank God that I'm surrounded around people that encourage me when I feel like giving up. Sometimes the first lady, I, I want to quit. Ministering is hard. I can't do this. Baby, the Lord didn't tell you to quit. All right. What are you doing? I'm frustrated. I'm upset. My patience is drawing on the curve. You sure that the Lord told you? No, he didn't tell me to quit. I'm just having a tantrum right now. That's right. That's right. That's right. But I need somebody to embrace me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I need a shoulder to cry on. All right. I need somebody who, who gonna go let the tears roll down and they're gonna let them dry out and they're gonna look at me and say, Weeping man do it for a night, but All right. don't rush me, don't rush me, don't rush me. The Bible said there's a time, there's a season for every time. There's a season. There's a time to cry. There's a time to weep. There's a time to laugh. You know, if I'm sitting in a restaurant, I'm laughing. Don't get mad at me. I'm in my laughing season. All right. And they cry. God been good to us. We hadn't had no funerals in right. That's right. That's right. Well, ain't no hearse car ain't no hearse with a car roll up here. That's right. Thank God. That's right. That's it. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't no roll up here. Lo, I've been to a lot. Ain't no roll. We we just we, we, oh glory. The only limousine rolled up here is the one that sister put us in and rolled us in before we died. Oh. Amen. Big White would came and picked us up after service. Rolled up in here, low big white limo picked us up and, and rolled us down Ocean Drive like we before we died. We, right. I've been in one before I died. what it should be like when you labor in love. My baby's riding in there. My son riding in there. Whisper over to me, Dad, this is how we should be riding. That day coming, son. Hold on. Don't get mad at ministry. Son, don't get mad at ministry because if you're faithful over the little things, God said, I'll make you rule. 
right. Ruler. A shifting is coming. My ship is at the dock. I feel it, Mother. I feel my ship. They came ashore. I, 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 I feel a shift. I feel something is about to happen for us, honey. I feel that our ship, they came ashore. 20 some years. Labor, preaching, praying, loving folks. Pastoring under all adversity. Coming out of my savings. Keep the right. church going. All right. You think God forgot about that? No. Oh, my ship is coming. All right, all right. My ship is coming. Amen. Paul said, but before I leave, before I leave, somebody said, what you can't tell I, 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 I'm going into another level in my mind. This is where the devil works at. But today, my mind is being renewed. I am somebody. I am the head. I am the loner and not the borrower. Greater is he that's in me. No weapon that falls against me. That's right. Thank you, Lord. My ship came in. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. I speak into you life and not death. Yes. My ship then came in. That's right. But before I leave, I want to embrace you and let you know I'm good. Because when my ship takes off, and you sitting back still in release, and that boat is switching from side to side, and you say, look at the man of God, the woman of God, the people of God. Don't be mad because you had the same opportunity that I did. How can I hug somebody who don't like me? He said, I'll make you kidding. Oh, All right. Yes, sir. Do you hear me? Oh, I can hug my hand. He said, I'll prepare a school before you in the presence of your enemies that you'll be able to sit down with your enemies and eat with them. Because your ship then came in. Love covers up a multitude of sin. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Now watch this transition. When souls have welded together, you can't celebrate the sun with me if you didn't go through the cloudy days with me. For it's something to weld together that has to be a connection. That's why people get mad at when you say, what do you want to celebrate with me now? What was you at when I was at my lowest? Uh -huh. What was you at when I was at my lowest? What were you at when I was in the fire? Shadrach said, Meshach, what you gonna do? He said, I'm getting in here. Man, they go, can we get out? He said, no, hold on. Let's not try to get out of this. Let's start a revival. Let's start something where we at. Let's sit down and have a campfire. Let's not rush out of this. All right. Let's just wait on the Lord. Yeah, yeah. It's hot right now, but he said he would never put no more than what we could bear. It's frustration right now. But 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 you got me, man? I got you, man. Get back to back with me. Back to back. Amen. And the hotter the heat got, the more they came together. Because heat burns you. All right. So all of a sudden, when I'm cold, I tell my wife, I said, honey, it's cold in here. Let's. And if we really bond together, our body heat. Yeah. Oh. All right. Yeah. It will create what we need. 
Why am I getting away from you when I need to be closer to you? And they got up under each other, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right. And the king said, I don't like what I see. So he increased the fire. Yes, he did. And the more he increased, the closer they got. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't need nobody drawing away from me when I'm going through. I need somebody to get up under. Crawl up under. And the Bible declared that Jesus said, I had enough. I'm going to get in the fire with you. All right. Amen. Amen. Yes, he will. Do you know Jesus will see where you at and he'll yes. get up? And he'll come where you at? Yes, he will. He said, it don't matter where you at. I'll come where you at. I'm, I'm not too big if you're too low. It don't matter where you at. He'll come where you at. That's right. And he'll say, scoot over. All right. Come on. And he says, if I don't get you out of it, would you still serve me? That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Do you still think I'm in? Yes. Do you still think I can do it? Yeah. I'm going to send somebody to question you and test you. So the kings come and say, what if he don't pull you off? He said, we know he's still there. If God don't do nothing else for you right now, do anybody here know that he's in? Do anybody here know that? Do I got any able? Does anybody in this room know that if he don't move another in my life, he's already shown me what he's capable of doing. All right. And when souls well together, All right. I'm about to... When you are well to somebody, when a time of departure comes, it's hard to let them go without a good cry. That's what the scripture said. Because they had embraced. Anybody ever been in love before? Amen. Anybody ever been in love in your love one time? do without so you my reason why I'm breathing I don't want to live if you ain't living in me when a soul wells together and it comes for somebody to say now y'all got to separate when you well to something all right when you well anybody you know what well does well glues you Joints you together. All right, that's right. And even though you're trying to leave, mm -hmm. I don't want you to leave. <laughs> I've been through something with you. That's right. We didn't been in the fire together. That's right. We joined. I'm all up in your joints. We joined it up together. Where do you think you're going? Where do you think you're going? Tuesday we had some fellowship together. Where do you think you're going? I got to go. No. No! Some kind of Christians I like to be around. Man, I can't do nothing without you. You can't leave me. You can't leave me. Why you gonna leave me now? Yeah. You got you. My, that, nobody can sing that song like you can sing it. Where you think you going? I gotta get on my ship. My ship ain't came to me, you know. And you sing that song. And when you break a well, only way you can break a well. A three, four cord is not easily broken. That's right. It's been time that the enemy told me not to go simple because you're so much in love when you snuck out the back door. <laughs> Do I any back door saying, say, I got to sneak out and get my blessing this year? I can't sit here. You telling me to stay at home, but I got to sneak out the back door because I'm so much in love with God. The Bible said, Paul, 
Paul said, I don't kiss anybody. A kiss is special. Yes, right. Well, y'all looking at me crazy. I'm just trying to show you something. You just don't go around kissing on anybody. What are you talking about, brother? When you love somebody. My mama, every time I leave her, she said, come here, baby. And she kisses me. All right. And because I love her so much, I leave that lipstick on all the way back to Texas. And sometimes I don't even want to wipe it. I love my mama. And what reminds me that I've been in her presence is that kiss. And my wife, let me wipe, now I'm going to wipe that off. That's my mama. Lips on me. And no matter what I'm going through, I can look in the mirror and say, my mama with me. She loves me. You don't kiss her, me. People come up and kiss you. Either they don't want to kill you or they love you. <laughs> Jesus told one of y'all going to betray you and want to kiss. That's why it's two type of kisses. It's a kiss that I love you. It's a kiss that if I can kill you, I'll kill you if I kill you. But either one of the kisses, you can tell when it's a kiss of passion and when it's a kiss of destruction. Because when somebody kiss you and they love you, You go on now, I don't want to go. You go on now, I don't want to go. You go on. You have to push him with it. No, I don't want to go. Don't tell me you love somebody and you just, you just ain't embracing them. Daddy, I love you. I can tell when Jay embracing me for a toy that he really loves. A little boy walked in the room the other day. He said, Daddy, I love you. Didn't have no request. Jay, I love you too. No negotiation. Just natural. Daddy, I love you. Sometimes we don't even know how to say we love somebody because we never release right. My daddy never just told me. Son. No matter how dirty your feet is, no matter how ugly you are, I love you. See, don't embrace somebody because they're clean. When you love somebody, you embrace them when they're dirty. That's it. That's it. The embracing has to release him. And the Bible said Paul kissed him. And they took him. With sadness. If you knew this was your last Sunday. Among your brothers and sisters. How would you act? All right. Yeah, that's good. If you knew this is my last message, how would you act? All right. Get up and greet somebody. Get up and greet somebody right now. If you knew this was your last Sunday, You ain't going to see me no more. I ain't going to see you no more.
What do you mean, God? I ain't gonna see him no more. What do you mean, God? I ain't gonna see him no more. I ain't gonna see him no more. What you mean, God? My friends? My little friends? Love you. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Embrace him. Shipmate, I know this is your first time at this church. I know, but I thank you for your service. Thank you for your service to this country. I thank you for your sacrifice that you made to be where you at right now. I really mean that. I thank you. I thank you for the sacrifice that you didn't want to make, but you had to make them to get where you at. Thank you, shipmate. The man, you're blessed to have your mother. You're very blessed, son. I'm telling you, you the value of having your mother.